You know me, Segura? Of course, Captain Morales. But why? It's not important. If you'd like to put on your overcoat, my friends are waiting. Your friends are also my friends, Morales. If there has been any misunderstanding, I can clear it up instantly. I hope so, Colonel Segura. Please. Shall we go? And Morales? Why isn't he with you? He was explaining to a policeman why he had a revolver pointed at me. <laughs> Seems it's illegal in France. And you took the opportunity to escape. I wouldn't be here if I had. Take me where you're supposed to. Good morning, sir. Sit down, Cooper. Cooper, what do you know about these do-it-yourself kits? In my day, there weren't any. 
I wonder if they aren't a little too complicated for a boy of eight. Not if it's your son. Flattering me is going to get you nowhere. Well, you can be sure it wasn't deliberate since you interrupted my vacation. By the way, you get to see your mother? How is she? For one day. And then I called. And then I came. Ever heard of a Colonel Segura? Segura. Segura. Cuba, 1961. He was the one who commanded that unfortunate anti-Castro expedition. You were in Japan, I think, right about that time. I don't think that was a decisive factor. Very modest of you to acknowledge it. But let's get back to Segura. What happened to him? He dropped out of sight for years and just turned up again in Paris. One of our agents heard about it through a Cuban contact he's kept. We want to know what he's doing. They suspect he's double-crossing us in favor of Castro? Don't really know. But many individuals in this world consider Colonel Segura a real king-size hero. Apparently, so does Mrs. Beckett. His mistress? I doubt it. She's about 65. As you might have gathered by now, you're to get to Segura through this Beckett woman. In uh, Paris? I hope you don't mind. Oh, well, Paris is always Paris. None of us at the embassy ever believed the story of the suicide. We knew Mrs. Beckett too well. This gentleman is from the insurance company that holds her policy. We immediately ran a paraffin test on her, result negative. She was found holding the pistol in her hand, but she wasn't holding it when the gun was fired. Then it's murder. And the killer tried to make it look like suicide. Thank you, doctor. I need some passport photos. I'm sorry, sir. We don't do that kind of work. That's funny. I was told to come here by Professor Grandison. Grandison? Well, in that case, this way. Ready? This way. Jack, this is Rod Cooper. Hello, Jack. Hi, Rod. Rod Cooper, Agent OS-27, welcome to Paris. I see you were expecting me. I got a coded message this morning saying you'd contact me. I suppose the chief sent specific instructions for me. Here they are. Just came in. Shall I go, Steve? And no, wait just a minute. Let's find out what he wants us to print up. Yes, I'll need an American passport in the name of Ronald F. Green, age 32, Tucson, Arizona. Also an international driver's license. It'll all be ready in a couple of hours. Good. You seem to have an efficient setup. We've been lucky. Same staff for three years. About Segura, how long have you been watching him? 
Ever since we were informed of his arrival in Paris. Your Cuban contacts can't think very much of him. No. As a matter of fact, they've tried to put him out of commission several times. But we were able to persuade them that our tactics were more professional. Sometimes men like Segura are more useful alive. Well, at least until you know how they fit in. I understand Clara Beckett's reputation was pretty clean. Oh, yes. There was never any scandal about her. She was the widow of the embassy's military attaché. She had become one of the most popular figures in our community. Is it possible that Segura was using her to meet certain people? Could be. Several times recently, he's been seen in the company of a painter friend of Mrs. Beckett, a certain Mark Hammond. But you lost track of him after the murder. He seems to have disappeared. At any rate, we've lost all trace. Somehow he managed to shake off the best tale we put on him. Uh, what about Hammond? Well, the critics aren't too enthusiastic, but you'll find him in Momart. Okay. I hope you like art exhibits. Oh, yes. Do these say anything to you? Yes, mainly that this painter can't paint. You think Hammond is really a spy and he's just using all this as a cover? Let's say a psychological cover. I would say it's an attempt of an exhibitionist to assert his personality. It could be dangerous. That's right. Hitler was also a bad painter. Are you greatly influenced by the American school? Which do you think is more important, inspiration or talent? Well, perhaps you remember the words of Brock. If you have to fall back on talent, it means you've lost your inspiration. Of course, uh, without completely subscribing to the maestro's theory, I think I can safely say that... Uh, Excuse me. Are you Mr. Hammond? My name is Ronald Green. I believe you were a friend of my aunt. I'm the nephew of Clara Beckett. Excuse me. Certainly. My condolences, Mr. Uh, Green, Ronald Green. I was terribly upset by the suddenness of the tragedy. I never expected it. Perhaps you can help me, Mr. Hammond. About two weeks ago, I got a very strange telephone call from my aunt. She told me about a letter that a friend of hers was delivered to me in case anything happened to her. Do you think it's possible your aunt may have killed no, herself? No, I didn't say that. I'm only looking for the letter. I must admit at the time it didn't seem very important to me. Unfortunately, my aunt didn't tell me the name of her friend and I didn't ask her for it. I'll try, Mr. Green. It's possible that I may find out something. And if I do... I'll uh, be at the Hotel de la Ville for a few days. You can count on me. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Rod, what did that accomplish? <laughs> when you were a little girl, didn't you ever throw a stone into a pond to see how far the ripples would go? to me about a letter like that. Think a little harder, Helene. It's important. I was only her secretary, Hammond, not her friend. She never told anybody a thing. Not even about this nephew? Repeat the name. Ronald Green. 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 Why, yes, I think she did mention the one who lives in Arizona. Rather surprising. You know, he never wrote. Funny she should mention him at all. Too bad. Say, how about meeting for supper tonight? Sorry, I have another engagement. Oh, yeah, sure. I'd forgotten your evenings belong to Tom. No, Tom has to work. He's got an evening flight to New York. I'm going to a concert with a girlfriend of mine. A pity. We'll try for another evening. Goodbye. Hello, Manuel. Yes. This is Hammond. What is it? You 
got to get this message to the colonel. Go ahead. Listen carefully and write it down. Finally showed up, Hammond. There's somebody here I think you should know. OS 38 in charge of keeping contact with our movement. An American fighting in the movement for free Cuba is a rare thing to find. I am an American. OS 38. Call me Rogerson. Did you get through to the Colonel yet? Yes, I did. He told me to get the information to the American Congress file. That's why he's here. It's possible the woman doesn't know of the letter. But the opposite is also possible. That she lied about it. That's right. We must consider our movements with care. La, 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 la. Bum, bum, bum. Tommy, is that you? Tommy! What do you think? over Peter's flight tonight? Peter got better. Oh. You couldn't telephone, could you? It would be too expensive. I was at home till almost eight. And after eight? After I had dinner with Janine. Ah, with Janine. Just the two of them. I begin to understand. Here's your cap, Tom. I'm in the way. He's coming soon. You've been working your imagination overtime. Get some sleep instead. Go open. Who could that be now? You don't know? <laughs> You're a fool, Tom. Be quiet. Open the door. I want to see him. I'll never forgive you for this. Wait a minute. Go ahead. What do you want? <laughs>
And this Helene was Mrs. Beckett's secretary? Right up until the day of the murder. So your little stone in the water worked? Too well. But I can't help feeling guilty about the girl. Unfortunately, she's not out of danger yet. If they're determined to get her, they will. Look this way. Hello, So them come down with a body and you did not say a word to anyone. But, monsieur, there were all those newspaper men making all that noise. And besides, they thought they had come for poor Monsieur Roger, who has been ill. Tell me, Inspector. They'll murder her? If they want her to kill her, they could have done it here. Monsieur Bolt? Yes? I'm Inspector Bernard, Interpol. Come in. I hope I'm not disturbing you. I have a few questions. You've been at me all night. I've already told everything I know to your colleagues. Well, to be quite honest, I'm not really with Interpol. Here's my card. Come here, espionage. They don't waste any time. Were you the one who called the police? Yes. To report the disappearance of Miss Helene Dermeray. Yeah, I know. You have a picture of her? Of course. Right over there on the desk. Paulette, you there? Yes, Steve. Two minutes to go. Be ready. You say she disappeared? No, I said she was kidnapped. What made you think of kidnapping? She could have gone for a walk. What, after a sleepless night? It's completely absurd. She must have known I was already on my way back. I have a different theory, Mr. Bolt. She knew she was in danger, so she ran away. No. Why not? Because there's no explanation for the ambulance, the interns, the chloroform. It's still here. You can smell it. It is chloroform. Hello. Elaine, it's her. Darling, I'm near Orlean, in an auto wrecking yard. The owner was very understanding. He's letting me stay here. This is the police. Did anyone see you come in? Probably not, but hurry. I'm scared. Where is this place? One kilometer beyond our lead. We'll come there right away. Call the police. No, Mr. Bolt. Let's get going, then. No. I'll go by myself. But why? Because you're in my way, Mr. Bolt. <laughs>
go on in. Elaine. Up there again. Is he dead? Yes, I'm afraid so. Rogerson's in there. I'm sure he knows something about this. All right, think harder. Who's Segura, huh? I keep telling you. I don't know the man. Like a cigarette? Go ahead. What do you know about Segura? I don't know a thing. Hello, hello. Elise 3418. Hello? Steve? It's Larry. Don and Jack and I have been working him over in rotation, but he hasn't decided to talk yet. I'm pretty sure he will as soon as the effect of the drug wears off. Morphine? Yeah. He must be close to the breaking point right now. All right. Call me back. Helene. Whether you stay in Paris or not, I'm afraid won't make any difference. Your life is in danger. You see, Hammond belonged to an organization that believes that you know something about a letter that could solve the Beckett affair. And that's why we beg you to consider this proposal. When must I make this trip? Today, Hammond. You only have two hours before boarding the New York plane. Everything Rogerson said is recorded here. 
An American working for Segura, knowing perfectly well that Segura's against us. Did Hammond know this? No, Hammond was completely taken in. He was a fanatic who'd been conned into believing that Segura was heading an underground movement for the liberation of Cuba. He was also under the impression that this movement had the tacit approval of the United States government. Did he tell you why they killed Mrs. Beckett? Yes. Hammond had shot his face off to her about Segura's plans, and when they realized she knew too much, they had to kill her. What I don't understand is why a little man like Hammond represented such an important card in Segura's hand. Even little men can be useful. No, there's more to it than that. Maybe Segura can help us find out what... Segura? Yeah, Segura. Let's get Rogerson down here. General Segura, you're wanted on the telephone. It's Paris. Oh, thank you. Who is it? Colonel. Rogerson. Oh, at last you got around to telephoning me. That was very considerate of you. About that girl, Hélène. Did you find her? Yes, we found her. She's taken care of. For good, I hope. Yes, completely. But it wasn't an easy job. We had an accident with Hammond. What kind of an accident? He's dead. Dead. Rogerson. I told you not to let him get involved in this. Ask him to say it again. I didn't understand. Hello. Can you hear me? Please repeat. I told you not to let Hammond get involved in this. Colonel, Hammond insisted. It wasn't my fault. He couldn't stand being pushed. Hammond was far too valuable a man to be lost in such a stupid way. I'll be waiting for you here in Bern. I want to know how it happened. All right. I'll be in bed. Now give it to me. So Hammond was too important to be involved. What do you mean by that? I haven't any idea. If you want this, you'll have to speak first. I've already told you all I know. Why did Segura say it would be difficult to replace Hammond? Give it to me. I'll tell you afterwards. No. If you open up, you'll get it. Rogerson, don't you want your dinner? Hammond was obsessed. You could make him do anything you wanted. Go on. Remember, Hammond was an American expatriate. Segura wanted... <laughs> maybe to make use of that. But I don't know in what way. Give the baby his bottle. Shining bed. That's fine. Put my bag in there.
Danke. Danke. Please call for anything you need. Thank you. Now, as I understand, we are Mr. and Mrs. Douglas, and you're my secretary. Only during the daytime. At night, Rod and I will have to switch roles. Well, let's just say rooms, if you don't mind. <laughs> If you want to go out, I'll stay with him for a while. You want me to get you anything? No, thanks. I'll get you some chocolates in that case. Okay. You think I like being shut up in here all this time? When is it going to be over? Well, it's taking them a while to build me up as a man with a criminal past. Cigarette? Thanks. Cooper, let's put our cars on the table. That's where they are. Well, I'm not convinced of that at all, my friend. You've made a plan to get Segura's confidence. This plan, however, is based on the supposition that I'm not going to betray you. That's right. But I trust you. Which is why you keep me locked up in here day and night. You're very observant. I'm just very fond of life. I know you people don't think much of a man's life. Especially a man like me. A traitor. A killer. Well, believe me, Rogerson. You are not the type of fellow who inspires friendship. I can guess your plan. I introduce you to him. And then if I'm right... An accident happens to me. Well, I don't think Segura is to be taken in like that. And I think that your plan is destined to fall through. Tell Bellevue Palace, please. Right away, sir. Colonel Segura, room 921, please. One moment, please. There is no answer, monsieur. I'd like to leave a message. Several later, what is the message? Meet me at 5 o'clock this afternoon, Villa Hofbrau. Signed, Rogerson. Très bien, monsieur. Be sure he gets this, it's very important.
see you again, Colonel. What does this mean, Rogerson? Well, Hammond mentioned him to me. They knew each other quite well. So I thought I'd bring him. You'd have done better to consult me first. What is your name? Smith, naturally. Shall we sit down? Don't make a move, anyone. The world is a small place, isn't it, Colonel Segura? We followed every step you've made. In Paris, you got away, Colonel. But this time, you're out of luck. You are making a grave mistake, Major Blasco. Turn around. All of you turn around, I said. I'm afraid you've had it, Segura. <laughs> Blasco, get away from me. How did he go? As you agreed. But believe me, I would rather have killed Segura. You will have your chance with him, too. Let's go. Did Rogerson try to interest you in uh, joining my service? Well, actually, Hammond spoke to me first. Hammond? Yes, I knew he was in Paris, and I went to him to try to get some money. He told me about your movement to free Cuba. I said I was interested. And he vanished, and I haven't seen him since. And Rogerson, how did you meet him? He looked me up a few days ago and told me that Hammond had spoken to him about me. He asked me if I wanted to go to Barron and meet someone. He didn't mention any names, but I figured it was the same deal. Just uh, how much do you hate Fidel Castro? <laughs> well, Colonel, that depends on how much money you offer me. I might consider $4,000 a month as a starter. Do you mean that? But there is one little condition, Mr. Smith. I must have this newspaper. So you can blackmail me? All I require is your honesty with me. You'll have nothing to complain of. Well, Colonel, for that kind of money, I can be pretty honest. You can keep the clippings. I agree. You're hired. When did Hi. you get back? A couple of days ago, but I couldn't get away before now. He's watching you. <laughs> no, as a matter of fact, he made me his bodyguard, because after that incident in Switzerland, he got a little nervous. But he gave me the day off, because I think he's seeing someone he doesn't want me to know about. Well, I have some news for you, Rob. They sent us a report on Rogerson. First of all, that's his real name, and second, he wasn't such a desperate character. He'd only been on drugs a little while. I'm sure Segura had something to do with that. Steve thinks so, too. But there's another thing. Rogerson comes from a political background. His father was a United States senator. Even Hammond's family was involved in political life. Well, that's quite a coincidence. It might mean something. Well, if it does mean something, you should have gotten yourself some distinguished parents at the same time you got your credit as a killer. <laughs> well, that's Planned Parenthood in reverse. Oh, I have no intention of putting you through a third degree, Colonel Segura. 
But you did promise us you would be ready on time, didn't you? Yes, I did. Since I believed in your word, I told our service to proceed with a plan that we could depend on to bring success to the party of Dr. Ordonius. Remember, I made that suggestion myself, hoping that the plan would produce increased power for us in South America. What you say is true. It was you who proposed the assassination of Dr. Ordonius by those two Americans. What I was requested to do, I did. The two men that I finally selected were absolutely ideal. Mark Hammond was a brainless fanatic who thought we were launching a military coup against Castro. And with Rogerson? and the state he was in, he would have murdered anyone we'd told him. I should offer you my congratulations, that is, if Mark Hammond and James Rogerson were still alive. These little accidents in our business happen too often. We cannot afford any more such accidents. The elections in Nicaragua will be taking place at the end of the month. In exactly 22 days. I've just recruited another American. Uh, looks like a good prospect for an executioner, but politically, I'm afraid. <laughs> He's next to nothing. Actually, all he is is a criminal, a professional gunman. I think it would be a good idea to have him working alongside someone who is, who is more, more sympathetic to our goals. Nadja has a proposal to make. The gentleman I'm thinking of is not from a family like the Hammonds or the Rogersons, but I think he will be just as useful a tool against the United States as the other two men were. At the moment, he's in Paris. He works for the Department of State. His name is Herbert Craig. Darling, don't sound depressed. Almost everyone needs money at some time or another. I won't be able to pay it back quickly. It's not important. This is a friend. Listen, why don't you come over? All right. Thanks, Nadia. What time? Whenever you want. Let's make it 10. All right. I'll see you at 10. All right. work for you. But this time we're in a hurry. Risk is a flower, a child. 
charming flower Maybe we'll blossom Tomorrow, tomorrow it will blossom So stay here, stay here and wait with me Try to love me day by day Will I see you tonight? Sure. As a matter of fact, you may find me tough to get rid of. You don't really seem the type. When I like someone, I'm faithful. Honey, you know I'm in love with you. Well, then you are perfect. No, I do have one little defect. What? I, uh... I'm a liar. <laughs> Au revoir, chérie. See you tonight. I'd like to win 10,000 francs. What? That's right. It's easy. All you have to do is tell me what that man was here wanted from you. From me? That's right. Why don't you let me answer that question? I ask if I was her first love, right, darling? <gasps> now, I'll give her 10,000 francs. <clears throat> don't. I'm one of Sikora's men. Please don't. If that's the case, why don't we go see the colonel? I'll tell you the truth, Smith. 
We were beginning to suspect you. Up until last night, your behavior was a bit strange. We were wondering if you were spying on us. I admit, I was uh, more than just a bit curious when you went off with that young lady. So you had me followed? An elementary precaution. A confession for a confession. I knew that he was sent by you. But you hit me anyway. Look, my friend, I don't like being followed. Not even for $10,000 a month. Next time it happens, I quit. I think you are forgetting. I am still in possession of those newspaper clippings. I think you're the one who's forgetting, Colonel. I suggest you read those newspaper clippings again. Merci, monsieur. I have to get myself ready for my number now. I'll be here. You mean the one who just came in? He's an American. I never knew who he was. The first night he came in was the night I met you. Oh, does he come here often? Almost every night. He's Michel's new boyfriend. Who was the boyfriend before him? Rogerson, American. Rogerson? Do you know him? No. The name doesn't mean anything to me. What happened to him? They say he's gone back. She seems to be hooked on Americans. Well, as a matter of fact, Michel doesn't really think it matters much. Uh, champagne? Hmm. Excuse me, got a light? Thanks. What's the matter with you? I'm afraid the Colonel wasn't very diplomatic with Herbert. He seems very upset tonight. There isn't much time. He's got to make up his mind. Yes, but if Herbert gets nervous and starts to shoot, we'll have done a lot of useless work. Any man who has you for a woman can't be too anxious to lose his life, Michel. Well, did you bring the stuff? I know my job. Very good, Smith. You've been making progress. You are coming along. I wouldn't want to be in the shoes of the man I have to shoot. Who said you had to fire at someone? Well, I don't think you're sharpening me up just so I can hunt jackrabbits. Mm hmm? Why not? There are many, Sunday. His name is Herbert Craig. He's first secretary at the embassy. He gambles a lot and has lost a lot. Paulette, did you get a chance to search Michelle's house? Yes, and there was just what you said there'd be, morphine. The similarity between Craig and Rogerson is obvious. After they got him hooked on the stuff, they became puppets. The same for Michelle. I'm sure that he'll stick me with Craig as a partner. Order us to go ahead with the killing, then turn us over to the police. Hmm. And they want two Americans because their aim is to compromise the United States. The puzzle will be solved when we know who the victim is. You're right. Only I don't think Segura will tell me who it is until the last minute. What are you planning on doing, Rod? I'll put a sardine can in my pocket. You're crazy. If they find a radio transmitter on you, you're done for. It's the only solution, Steve. I have no other way to communicate with you. At 
attention please. We are about to land at the Managua International Airport. Please fasten your seatbelts and no smoking, please. Thank you. Behind schedule. But we are here. She said this is Managua. Of course. The capital of Nicaragua. Hmm. I was just joking when I told you about Panama. That's too bad. I like Panama. Uh, excuse me, do you have a light? Thanks. You're welcome. know each other. Mr. Smith, Mr. Brown. <laughs> With those names, we know each other less than we did before. You are not here to make jokes, gentlemen. Now listen carefully. Senor Ordonez will be passing along this road. Come, take a look. When he reaches this point, you will be able to fire at least three shots before he is out of range. You cannot miss. Ordonez takes this road every day on his way to the Chamber of Deputies. He'll be passing by between 9.30 and 9.45 and Colonel. then... Yes, what is it? Colonel, they'll know which window it is. No, they won't. It's taken care of. As soon as you finish, run up those stairs. Out the door, onto the terrace, down the next flight, and you're free. And away on the other side of the block. Do you mind if I check it out for myself? <laughs> shooting at Dr. Ordonez tomorrow morning while he's on his way to the capital. Repeat time and place, Rod. We can't afford a mistake. I repeat, tomorrow morning on the street leading to the capital. Password is Steve. Confirm. Okay. Satisfied? Yes, we shouldn't be surprised on that side. There'll be no surprises at all. Manuel will be waiting for you outside the house with the car. Now then, are there any questions? Yes, Colonel. Is this murder really necessary? I don't think I would go so far as to call it murder. I ask you, why must we shoot him? We must arrest the growth of communism in South America. You surely cannot pretend to be unaware of the favorable attitude Ordonez has toward Russia. Hmm. Colonel Segura, I believe Ordonez's party doesn't have much chance of winning this election. They will have no chance if you two do your work tomorrow. Now, take a look at this photograph and memorize the face. Manuel, the rifles. No, nothing will happen. Mr. Ordonez is not about to take a bullet in the back of his neck for the love of this country. Are you certain? I'm convinced of it. They'll be suspicious of Rod. I know he's always getting into deeper trouble, but I can't arrest Segura. And he's only the executioner. 
Someone bigger than he is directing this maneuver. That's the big fish. The other one. That's the big fish. Uh, Steve, look over here. Rod's going somewhere. He's got the tin of sardines and some car. Where's it heading? Tell you in a minute. Around the lake. Here, there's only a fisherman's village, but further on... They've stopped. But there's nothing there. What has happened that is so important? Will you tell me why you woke me up? American counter-espionage is playing tricks on us, Colonel. Ardonis has been informed they will assassinate him tomorrow when he comes into the city. That is impossible. Yes, but I was informed of this by the chief of police himself. I've got a final bearing on them. They're 37 miles northwest of Managua. Maybe a cabin there, or a fisherman's hut. Steve. You want me to have a look? No, you go, Frank. But don't let yourself be discovered unless you're sure that Rod is in danger. Okay. It's really curious, wouldn't you say? Only the five of us knew of the final phase of this operation until sometime this morning. Until three in the afternoon, when I spoke to the two Americans. I think it's evident that one of them is a spy and not a rank amateur either. He didn't have much time to communicate. The two Americans have been kept under guard. I don't understand how they got the message out. With a big organization behind them, they can usually find the means. I would like to know in exactly what way Dr. Ordonez was informed of this attempt. I was simply told not to come by Cali Asquanagua tomorrow morning on my way to the Chamber of Deputies because in all probability something serious would happen. That's all you had. But I imagine they know more about it than they told me. Hmm, that's probable. But what counts is how much the public knows about it. What do you mean by that? Supposing the attempt takes place on schedule tomorrow morning, Dr. Ordonez received his warning in ample time. But after thinking it over, he decided to go all the same. Not bad. They'd probably think I didn't give the matter very much thought. Or I was courageous. No one will ever imagine that I had the faintest idea that the gun was loaded with blanks. That's all very well, but remember, one of those men is a counter-espionage agent. I must admit that's true, but let's not lose sight of the fact that he can hardly take a chance of shooting Ordonia. You don't have to worry, he won't shoot. But we can still carry out our plan all the way. The only thing that's necessary is that the presidential car turn into Cali Asquanaga at 9.30 in the morning. Set it for 9.30 in the morning. At that time, the car will be coming down the street. It will be quite obvious that the bomb exploded in their faces at the very moment they were supposed to throw it at Ordonez. We'll spread a rumor that one of the assassins was an American agent. And because it's true with a little luck, we should find evidence to prove it. Where shall we put it, Colonel? Ah, a hiding place. Hmm. In here, Colonel? I don't think I'd want them to believe they have even two minutes longer to live than they really have. I'll be watching Ordonez's house carefully. When he leaves, I'll telephone you and let it ring twice. Manuel, you come with me. Then come back and wait for them at Calais St. Martin. The keys to the apartment.
Nice gun. Why don't you have something to drink? I don't drink in the morning. You know what you're doing. Sure. Ordonius will pass here in an open car and I'll shoot him. Smith, this man Ordonius is no menace to the United States. Look, I know what I'm talking about. Politics are full of mysteries. But there should be some logic. Obviously, Ordonius's party hasn't a prayer. A band of fanatics. A small following. How do you know that? I just know. For sure. His reputation is that he's a man who's always fought communism. It's also senseless. Our relations with Nicaragua could be totally severed. Well, if you have so many doubts, why are you here? What's your reason? I don't have any scruples. Of course. You're doing it for money. And you? For a reason that's just as rotten as yours. If you don't stop drinking that slop, you'll be drunk by the time we're trying to get out of here. Let's go. Hello, Steve. Ordonez has gone. There are three persons in the car with him. Any news of Rob? No, there's no news. I've sent Frank to Kali Asquanaga. Over and out. Any minute now, it's gonna ring. Any minute. It's only 9.20. What's the rush? Or are you getting anxious to pull that trigger? I wish he'd never get here. No, I'm not anxious. I never killed anyone. You're the criminal. Why don't you stop drinking? Because I like whiskey. If you don't approve, get out. There's a thought. I'll take off. You shoot at Ordonez, but miss it. That way your conscience is clear. No one has troubles. Better yet, we both stay alive. How will you square that with Segura? <laughs> I'll just keep my half of the advance and forget about the rest. I don't think he's going to sue me for fraud. But it wouldn't be so easy for you, would it? No. You're right about that, I'm afraid. Better put your coat on. We may have to leave here in a hurry. And will the car be coming by? It will be here in three minutes. The bomb will explode at 9.30 precisely. Why don't you level with me? Is Sugur blackmailing you? Yes, blackmail. The man's destroying me. I'm forced to do anything he wants me to. It's like being a puppet on a string. Get off that stuff. Now come. Someday soon, I'm gonna kill Segura. All right, I admit I'm no good. But he's blackmailing me, and I owe him money. He forces me to smuggle morphine. I do it through diplomatic channels. But he'll never make a murderer out of me. Put the gun down.
Craig? Hey, wait a minute, Craig. Have some of this. You'll feel better. Thanks. Last night at dinner, Segura was called to the telephone. He came back looking pretty worried. He told Manuel that they had to leave. I got the idea to put the sardine can in the car. You couldn't have had a better idea. That way, we'll find out where their hiding place is. And believe me, it'll be a surprise. After what's happened, I'm sure they'll have a meeting soon. You can bet on that. That's Frank. Where you been? Kali Esquinaga? Yes. They've got their soapboxes out. They're talking about the dirty Americans. It seems to be well arranged. That would seem to prove your idea. Well, it's obvious the whole thing was organized to damage America's reputation. There's something important you don't know. Last night, when he was watching the house, Frank had the impression he saw Ardonia's leaving. Here, Steve. Take a look over there. You have a look, Rod. That's his car, all right. Well, it's time. If you're still sure you want to help. Of course I do. I won't lie to you, the risk is great. Just explain what I have to do. These are micro spies, very sensitive transmitters. We've got to plant one of these in the house before they get a chance to search us. I've got a present for Colonel Segura. Good, come in. I'd like you to meet an American secret agent, Colonel. Well, aren't you surprised? We would be, if we believed it. You are the one. I want to hear from you exactly what happened this morning. What is this stupid farce? Untie my hands. Search him. Give me that. <laughs> it's a micro spy. That means there's somebody around here. Is that right, Smith? You came and bugged the house, so your friends could listen somewhere outside. Let's get rid of it. You all be quiet, or I'll wind up in big trouble. No one ever used your name. Congratulations, Senor Ordonez. This was a good idea, your plan to set up your own dictatorship. Nicaragua would have reacted violently against America, and you would have managed to align a new politics with Cuba. Now I think there'll be other headlines in the paper. In nice big print. Senor Ordonez, intended victim of an assassination plot found to be in collaboration with his own murderers. I don't think your public will like that very much, do you? But this will never be told. You are the only witness. And I do not believe that American counterespionage can come up with any sort of convincing proof yeah. about what we That's his voice. So That's Ordonez's voice. And that'll be the proof. I think we've heard enough. I'd like to thank you, Senor Adonis, for your cooperation. That's enough. Wait a minute. I've got to find out what this man is talking about. Don't you see he is bluffing? Craig, why don't you show the gentleman the document I gave you? Of course.
The end of Segura. Frank has Ordonez and Nadia. You've done a good job, Rod, and I know the chief will reward you with some safe and easy assignment. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> impurity complex. Hmm. I've heard that line in a movie somewhere. Me too. James Bond, as all you men thinking, you're secret agents with licenses to kill. And just who is this James Bond? Yes, my dear, I'll be sincere. How can I swear? to risk. Risk is a flower, a charming flower. Maybe we'll blossom tomorrow. Tomorrow we will blossom. So stay here, stay here and wait with me. My day, maybe, maybe we Dear, I'm just sincere. How can I swear? 